I'm sharing my screen already, as you can see. Um, first, I would like to start by apologizing for not being able to make it um, last week when it was initially scheduled. For whatever reason, I know it's a busy schedule for me. I had today a uh, pen down on my calendar for this event. And also with the <clears throat> with the storm, it wasn't possible for me to come down to Aberdeen because um, I currently work in England. Um, so it, it was very, very challenging due to all the cancellations and um, all, all of that. So I wasn't able to come down to Aberdeen for this event. So I sincerely apologize for, for that. And um, I, I, you know, kind of crave your indulgence for um, forgiving me ahead of time for not being able to uh, attend last week for those of you who were there. OK. Um, Rachel, will you just help me keep an eye? <clears throat> I'm sorry for my voice again. Uh, I think the weather has come with its own um, uh, excesses, so it, it's already affecting my voice. Um, but if you don't understand anything, please do let me know um, through the chat. Okay, today, um, you know, I really just wanted to talk to us uh, specifically about academic writing. As a lecturer within the university system, I've come across a lot of writing, um, I've set questions, I've set assignments that I want students to, you know, write something as a response to what I have asked them to do. And so I realized that there's quite a lot, especially for those of us coming from Nigeria specifically, the way we do our writing in Nigeria is 100% different from what you would have met um, here in the UK when you started your studies. You find out that in Nigeria, um, even to the best of the best of universities you could ever think of, um, no lecturer is interested in how you write because they themselves don't have the time to actually start scrutinizing you. All they know is that um, have you done whatever they need you to do um, to get that um, uh, assignment submitted and passed. So you could see people going on to Google and downloading already existing um, writing or assignment or coursework and submitting, and they will get a very good mark. And you will be wondering, and when you now come over to the UK, and you do the same thing, you go on to Google, you copy a particular paragraph, you paste, you copy another paragraph, you paste, and then you'll be surprised when, for those in Algi, when Algi will send you an email and say, hey, you have committed an offense. Um, called plagiarism. You'll be wondering, what, what have I done? I mean, this is what I'm used to coming from Nigeria. When given an assignment, we just go online and we Google it and then we submit. It doesn't work like that here. And also, um, now, even with ChatGPT, which is also doing a lot of the work for us, it also makes it look as if you just go to ChatGPT ask for anything and it can just generate that for you and you submit. So today I'm looking at um, theoretically, unfortunately we were not, I wasn't able to make it physically to engage you practically on what you can do. But uh, I believe today you will still go away with a, a, a good amount of knowledge of what you need to do as regard academic writing. So, um, the first thing I would want to uh, look at is tackling writing task. When um, you are required to do a writing in the university, there are different forms that this could take. Um, number one, it could be just an essay. It, it could be for you to just write a report. It could be your project 
or dissertation, whichever name you want to call it. Now, all these forms of writing require different forms of presentation. Um, also requires different level of um, engagement uh, with it. For example, the way you write an essay of one page, two page, will not be the same way you write a report of five pages. And the same will not be for a project or your dissertation. And many a times our people have found one thing when it comes to report and dissertation. And then you, you realize that one key problem is just that either the, the work has been plagiarized or the work is not um, meeting the laid down assessment criteria. And so these are things that we are going to be talking about. Uh, don't be offended when I'm talking about things that are not on my slide. As you can tell, an idea based on what I've written can come in, and I'll just put that across to help each and every one of us. So why do we need to um, engage in academic writing? Why, why do we do that? They're clearly because it presents itself the opportunity for you as a student to demonstrate um, your knowledge and understanding of the topic that you have been asked to do. And that is why, as an academic, we completely frown against copying, just going to copy and paste, because in real sense, it doesn't demonstrate knowledge. You have not actually engaged to demonstrate your knowledge of that topic or subject. And again, um, we ask you to write because it's also the opportunity for you to engage in research, engage in research around that topic and aspect, and also is for you to demonstrate the ability to organize supporting information in line with the topic you have been given, and also to demonstrate the evidence that you have gathered from your research, either in support of what you are writing or against what you are writing. So, because of these um, capabilities that academic writing opens you up to, that is why up to today, universities still ask students to you know, submit a report or a dissertation, even though we know that AI can write it. But the core abilities, the core capabilities and uh, that this very art present still make it very juicy and attractive to the universities. So as my fellow Nigerian brother and sister or fellow African brother and sister coming to the UK with a different academic um, standard and practice, what are your expectations? So the first thing I want to talk about is how you will get started. And trust me, I can't say anything than what I'm going to say, which is have a realistic time planning uh, in place. Even if you did not go away with anything else from all I'm going to say this evening, if you can go away with this very one, have a realistic time planning in place. I will be more than happy. I will feel satisfied that my time and your time was not wasted. In Nigeria, we are more of a fire brigade people, even though we don't belong to the fire uh, department. But we, our life is, you know, formed and shaped around fire brigade approach. Just at the time the work is about to be due, that's when we start running helter skelter, uh, looking for how to do the job. And whenever we do that, we run into all these problems. I want to give you some information as Brashim is aware. Just this year, I have been involved in student cases that involve plagiarism. It's not less than four two from RGU, the other two from my own university. Four cases. And these four cases, we are 
at the point of, you know, you have to go back because you are not demonstrating what you said you are, which is knowledgeable in this subject area. But thank God for God's intervention and God's mercy and our own little contribution towards this, that these very students are still in the UK. But the truth be told that we have to change our approach, which is why we are organizing this again. So what is it that is expected of you to do? Number one, you need to consult your course handbook. You need to consult your course handbook so that you can be able to identify your assignment submission deadline or due date. You see, in Nigeria, we don't do this. You and I know that, in fact, assessment is one of the weapons of lecturers. They can come into class anytime and say, today we are doing assessment. Today we are going to have a test or we are going to have this or that. In the UK, it doesn't work like that. Because we as lecturers need to give you information that you will be assessed on this day, on this time, at this topic, so that you will prepare. Which is why even myself, after I've been through the master's at uh, the university, I was like, wow, if I had known, if someone had told me what I am telling you now, trust me, uh, the extinction would have just been a small something to graduate with. You would have, you know, you would aspire for more. Because in the UK, they will tell you what they are going to assess you on. We will tell you. It's not like in Nigeria where you don't even know where the question is going to come from. But here, we will tell you. And all that it requires is just you making out time to plan for that submission, plan for it. So today I'm going to be helping you in, you know, coming up with this good habit of having a plan and other things that we'll talk about. So one thing you need to do, if you have not done that already, please do that. Go back to your module, each and every one of them, to your week one, week one module uh, page on your whatever uh, uh, VLE that you use, whether it's module for those in Audi, whether it's your campus module for those in Aberdeen Uni, uh, whether it's Canva or whatever you use for your modules. Go back to the first week of your module. Now open it and go to the assessment. Go to the assessment section and look at the time your assessment is due. When is this assessment due? Write it down. Now that you have written it down, then you can now begin to plan what I might call reverse engineering. So you know the end of your submission. Now start working backwards to today. Okay, today is the 29th of October. My assignment is due in November 27th. For example, one of the modules I teach, my assessment, a group submission, is due on the 27th of November. Now, if any student is in my module, what do I expect them to do? Write down 27th of November and then work backwards up to today on how you will do. And one of the things you need to do is work out how long you have. So how long do you have between the now, today, and the 27th, which is the submission time? How many weeks do you have? Once you know how many weeks you have, the next thing you will do is begin to think, how many courses am I doing? How many courses am I doing? I'm doing four, I'm doing five, I'm doing two in this semester. Now you say, okay, how many activities do I have in each of these modules? How many submissions do I have? Now, you can track this using uh, Microsoft Excel. So all you just need to do is open an Excel sheet, and then you will create um, module one, 
module two, module three, whatever be the name, and then you will now give due date for each of those modules. So, okay, 27th, uh, 12th, uh, this, you write them all down. And then you can now begin to put into the um, Excel sheet all the other activities that you will be engaging before that submission date. For example, some of you belong to a department in church and you go for departmental meetings or rehearsals or whatever. You need to put that in place. You don't ignore it because it will crop into your time. If you don't have it, you know, written down or you will make you not to be a, an effective worker in church, which is essential too. And then because God forbid, if you have any issue, you will run to church in the first place to seek for help. So you need to serve there and also you need to, you know, be able to do what you need to do. Many of us have part time um, jobs that also needs to go into the, your Excel sheet whereby you can now say, OK, I work on Monday nine to four and then you put that. I work on Thursday and um, three to five and then you put that. And so you know every week that this is the hours it's going to take you. Once you have, you know, categorically place every of these activities within the, your mini project management GAN chart. If you have put that in, you can know how many hours you have left. That okay, it's two hours I have left, including the ninth hours. And then you say, okay, I will be sleeping for, let's say, five hours every day. When I go to bed by 12, I wake up by five, you know? Or you say, okay, I don't want to be going to bed by 12, I'll make it two o'clock. Three hours sleep is enough for me uh, at this moment. So I'll do two to five. I wake up or two to six, which is um, four hours. I wake up. And then you have that pen down. Um, when I was a student, what I did was I'll print it out. I'll print out this Excel sheet with all my life in it. I mean, if you look at that Excel sheet, you can actually tell what I, where I am, what I'm doing in a given time. I'll print it and paste it everywhere in my room. Then I was single then, so it was easier to manage anyway. So I'll paste it everywhere in my room and on my bed, at the front, at the back, by the side, at the side, so that anywhere I turn, I know what I do. Another thing I did was to use my phone which I still do uh, I still do to today. I put everything on my phone. So my phone alarm goes off at every activity I need to do. So like today, which is what happened, I had set this uh, presentation to be today. So on my phone, it was set as today. And then when it was time for it, it to go off. It will just go off. You just see creed presentation by six. I'll make it like an hour before just in case anything is happening or I'm somewhere that I need to travel uh, far. So I put the alarm and then the alarm will go off an hour before that activity. With that, I was always trying to keep tab with the, the major activities. Now, once you have clearly tabulated your life, uh, permit me to use that, um, in Excel sheet, then you can now decide how much time do you want to allocate to your reading or to researching the given topic. Now, once you do that, it makes it a whole lot easier for you. For example, you have five hours, you know, for the day, to do everything you have to do. And mind you, it's not every day you will have time for your work, uh, academic work, trust me. If you have actually timetabled everything well, you might discover that only Wednesdays you really have to put in more hours to your academic work, Wednesdays. 
And so what does that mean? That means nothing, no event, no any activity, nothing will go into that Wednesday. So you block it off and you guard it jealously outside any other thing. So once that happens, for example, uh, in my days, what I do is I will say, okay, analyzing the problem that I was given or looking for a side topic, and then I'll say, I'll do that on Wednesday between 9 to 12. I'm just going to use that 9 to 12 just to, you know, research, look for this, and then I'll write it. I need that. When I start to do it or when I will start, so say, for example, I say, okay, um, on the 1st of November, I'll start to look for my research topic. So I'll say between here, I'll say between 9 to 12 and on the 1st of November. So that is when I'm going to be analyzing the task that I have. And then to do preliminary research, what I'm going to do will be, um, I'll give it say, since I will be finishing 9 to 12, I will give myself an hour in between. I'll say, okay, I'll start the next one from 1.30. So I'll say from 1.30 over here, and I'm going to start that one after a week of looking for the topic. I should find the topic under one week. Now, remember, this time and days that I'm allocating is in line with the remaining days and in consideration of my submission date. So I'm not just allocating hours anyhow. I have it at the back of my mind that submission, in fact, my proper table will have on top of this very table, submission due date on top. So I'll have on top of this table, submission due date. I'll write, let's just keep with the 27th of November. So I'll write on top, submission due date, 27th of November. And then I'll begin to tabulate this various timing and when it will start as against this very submission deadline. What this does for you is just like what I wrote on top, that good planning ensures that you can realistically complete the work before the submission date. And the only reason why many of us coming from yonder find ourselves in that tight corner, having to just copy and paste without doing proper due diligence is because we are crunched with time. We are so, so limited by time, by the time we want to start our dissertation. And so we want a very fast and quick way to get it done in order not to miss the deadline. So if you actually have taken good care of the planning stage, which is why I'm paying and making emphasis on it, you know that your life becomes a whole lot easier going forward. All right? So the other thing is we have another key element you need to be aware of. And that very key element is you need to recognize in that assessment that has been given to you what are the core element or core task? What is it that you are required to do? Sometimes a lot of us have the, you know, you have looked at the handbook of your module, but you don't even know what the lecturer wants you to do. You have read it, but it doesn't click. What would I advise? Seek for guidance. And where do you seek for other guidance? Go to the lecturer. The person that set the assessment is the only person that will give you a clear indication of what they are looking for in the assessment. It's good to ask other people, ask your friends in class, but the only person that will tell you exactly what he or she is going to assess or grade or mark is the lecturer himself. Now, before the assessment is due, every lecturer in the UK is bound to explain 
to the student what they want from them. Even though the person might be doing as if we are in Nigeria as in he, he or she doesn't talk to you and all that, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is just send a simple email. Yes, whatever their name is, you know here we don't do Sama. So there, let's say Daniel, um, please, I would like to book a one-to-one -one appointment with you to discuss the assessment brief for module this, 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 this. Please, when is it convenient for you for this chat? Kindly let me know. Send that email. Once you send that email, that lecturer will book an appointment with you. And when you go there, you just tell them, I'm sorry, I've read this assessment brief, but I really don't understand what you are asking or requiring from me in order to answer your questions. It is bound, we are legally bound to explain it to you as a lecturer. So we will then tell you, okay, for question one, what you are required to do is to explain or review or interpret whatever be the assessment that lecturer will tell you. Now, when they tell you, you can go further and say, what and what are you, you know, expecting me to include, for example, in order to make it or, you know, to, to pass the module? Uh, what type of data, for example, or what type of um, uh, opinion are you uh, interested in? Such is okay, because at that moment, you have not written the work. So it's not as if you have done your work, you now send, in fact, I'll give you my own example. Some of my students, they will write the assessment, write the assessment, write the assessment, they will send it to me and say, there, to case there, Daniel, and blah, 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 that um, uh, here is my work. I would kindly want you to look at it and let me know if it is in line with what you are expecting. That kind of one, we will not do it. Why? Because that work is already written. If I tell you what in the written work, I have to do it for every other student. But if you have not written the work, you just come for more clarification on what is required and how you could go about it, yes, I will, I am bound legally to do that for you as a student. So know your right, but don't over ask of your right because then you also go outside of your right. One problem with Nigerians, especially from all the cases I've dealt with in LGU, is that we try to overclaim our right, you know, because we have heard that you have a right as a student. Oh, now we want to do our luta in the UK, forgetting that you are still visa bound. You're still visa bound. So know your right, but don't overstretch your right in terms of like example I gave you. You don't need to write the work and send to your supervisor and ask him or her whether what you're writing is in line. Do that before you start writing. So get all the clarity you need. Whether it's a critical analysis of this topic, you can go with some ideas, sir. If I discuss this kind of uh, topic on this kind of idea or this kind of idea, will I be in line with what you are expecting from the work? The person will say yes or no because you have not written it. I'm emphasizing that again, because you have not written the work already. Now, you need to know the topic that you are writing. And the only way to know the topic is by engaging in research. So you need to recite. And like I say again, you cannot recite when you don't have the time. And believe me, the government has made it that you should have the time because it is now compulsory that you work only 20 hours. 
if you don't want your visa to be impacted later on. So with 20 hours, that gives you only 20 hours for the whole week not to read your book. So that means the remaining hours of the week, you have it for your book. And so in that sense, please make out time and know the topic. And for you to know the topic, you need to research around the topic. For those in marketing, for example, or in management, you have been asked to write a report around AI and uh, consumer behavior. Don't just go to chat GPT and ask it to draft you a, a, a 2000 word count essay on AI and consumer behavior. You do that, you have something. If you follow the uh, lessons of um, our brother, Emeka Ibeniro, where he was teaching how you can use AI. If you do all those prompting, yes, you will have something. But the reality is that you don't have the knowledge. All you have just got is the same thing as what Google does, which is to give you the information, but you don't know it. So try to know your topic because the world is getting a bit more competitive. The, the labor market is becoming more competitive. So it's not like where they say, um, you know, if you graduate, you can just get a job. You, I'm sure you can tell what it tastes like to get a job out there. So please try and, you know, strive beyond just passing to knowing the subjects that you are doing. So in that case, try to understand the aspect of the topic that you are interested in. What is the topic? AI and consumer behavior. Okay, which aspect of this am I interested in? Am I looking at the impact of AI on consumer behavior? Or am I looking at AI generally on or consumer behavior as a result of AI being introduced? You know? So you look at the thing in different dimension. And that way, you can only survive it if you engage in research. So you go back to Google Scholar, and then at Google Scholar, you type AI consumer behavior search. You give it a range between this time to that time, and then it will um, generate articles within that time period. And then you begin to click each and every one of them to read it and to understand what they are saying, because you need it in our next discussion. You find out that many of your assessments, the lecturer will say, describe. Describe the elements of globalization responsible for whatever, whatever. In another of the um, learning objectives, it, is, it will say critically analyze or critically evaluate. Critical evaluation or analysis is different from description. And so, I'm going to talk to you about that element, which is criticality. And almost every submission that you have done or you will do going forward from November and December will involve criticality. The lecturer will just say critically evaluate, critically analyze, critically discuss, criti all of that is going to be coming. If you open your assessment brief now, you will find out it is there. What we want when we say critically analyze or evaluate or this is that go beyond simply summarizing and describing a source. Don't just come and tell me that um, Chigeze 2022 suggested that social media addiction among young people is on the increase as a result of the lack of uh, technological uh, measures to curtail uh, social media use. That is summary. You are just trying to summarize my work. Now, 
what you need to do when you are doing a critical analysis or evaluation is yes, present a summary of what I have done, but also go further to talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of what I've done. So for example, you cannot say, um, with all I have said earlier on, the study focused mainly on young adults and did not look at or consider those young adults within a developing context or uh, developing country, but majors made their uh, focus mainly on developed countries. As a result of that, this study would better, you know, be understood or applied if the uh, context of other uh, countries are put into consideration. Now, you are not just talking about my work as what it is, but you're also discussing the weakness, which is it focused mainly on younger adults in a developed country. But it's also a strength in the sense that it's focused mainly on young adults. So after you have said that, you then give your own opinion or judgment, which was where I was going by trying to say that you believe that this work will have you know, credence and more can be generated or learned if that study can be extended and also if, so depending on whatever your line of discussion for your assignment is, you can now add your own mouth, <laughs> if I will say that. You add your own mouth into that discussion. That is when you are engaging in a critical analysis or evaluation or writing. It's not just to come and say, uh, so, so, so 2013 said this, said that, and uh, so, so, so 2014 said that, said that. No, no, you have to do it in such a way that you bring this idea, you say who said it, you bring a, a contrary idea, and you juxtapose it, and you bring a supporting idea, and you place them in parallel, and then you add your own voice. So that is how we do academic writing. It's not just to summarize every idea. So in order to do it in the right way, what should you do? The first thing is you need to identify the main arguments and claims of any source. When we say source, we mean the article, the person you are talking about or you are reading from. All right. So you need to identify the main argument and claim of that source. What is the author trying to say? What are they saying? So when you pick any particular journal, the first question you have in your mind is that what is the main argument here? What are they saying? And then the next thing you will do is begin to consider the evidence that the author presents. So what I was, okay, this is the main argument about young adult addiction to social media. Now, what are the evidence that have been presented to support this claim? You will now see that some of the argument or evidence presented is that there is less um, restrictions or measure put in place by tech companies to ensure that young adults do not spend long hours on social media and also to ensure that the content being given to them is not of the type that will keep drawing them to staying longer on the social media platform. So these are the evidences that have been projected by that study. Now, you now ask yourself, is this evidence credible and persuasive? If it is, you write it down, you note it. Now, you identify the potential biases. What are the biases? that exists between or within the article that you are reading. <coughs> Excuse me. What are the limitations <coughs> in the source? Like I told you, the limitation could be the type of methodology that was adopted. The limitation could be 
the uh, chosen sample size. The limitation could be the context of the study. So what are the limitations? It could even be the recommendation. Now, with this, you then need to understand that, okay, is the author's perspective balanced? Was the author given a balanced discussion? Are there any important factors that have been, you know, overlooked? And if that has been overlooked, that those are the things you will include when you are writing up your own point about that very uh, topic. So when you are now making a, a, a summary from that source, all these that you are identifying here, all of this becomes what you will now use to write about that source. So if you pick, like I say again, if you pick my paper, you now say, what is the main argument? So you cannot say, um, TKZ 2022 discussed or discovered, you talk about my main argument. And then you now say that um, based on what has been discovered, you present the evidence that I have given. So I discuss this based on or following, you now mention those evidences that I have presented to you. And then you can now say that although this, this, that, that exists, that study was limited in, you can now talk about those limitations or biases that exist within that particular study. And then you now compare what I have done with what other studies in the same topic have done. So after you have done that, you now say, meanwhile, uh, Shell, let's use our brother Shell. Meanwhile, Shell 2023, in his own study about social media, uh, uh, impact of social media on young adults, for example, mental health, argued that, or, you know, suggested that, or, you know, so you will now bring another author in the same topic to critique, counter, argue what I had already presented, or you bring another author to support. So it's either you are agreeing, disagreeing what has already been um, presented. So you know, okay, meanwhile, Shell 2023 um, suggested that uh, technology uh, features or limitation of technology features and this do not necessarily result to uh, uh, young adult addiction to uh, social media. Rather, it is the loneliness of the young adult at home or the whatever uh, uh, family circumstance of the young adult that push them to embracing social media as their way of escape or coping mechanism. So you see now, you are presenting my own idea, counteracting that with Shemu or using Shemu's idea to critique my own or to present the opposite uh, perspective of what I have done. You see, when you write like this, you cannot plagiarize. You will never plagiarize. And then you now see that based on my own points you have presented, Shemu's points that you have also added, you now add your own voice in that discussion based on your own topic that you are writing. So at this juncture, I want to pause and just take question as I know this is the key area or key bottleneck when it comes to academic writing. Is there any question from anyone? Any question? Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, you said that uh, maybe like uh, getting the key points of the author, what the author said. Yes, sir. So when uh, in a situation whereby he writes about what the author said, and also uh, bringing your own uh, this thing uh, idea into it. Yes, sir. Are you required to also 
reference it or like cite put a citation about it. So yes, whenever you whenever you make a claim, a claim, whenever you make a claim about an author or about a fact about any point, whenever you make a claim, it is expected that you add citation to it. That was why I started, I said, Chikese 2022, that is citation. So it means that you are not saying that is your word, that is your own uh, words, but you're saying Chikese 2022 suggested that young adults are this, this, that, um, based on lack of technological features, you understand? Meanwhile, you see, I'm citing another person. Meanwhile, Shenwu 2023, argued that so those are the citations you are adding you are not you are not saying um lack of for example if you just write and say lack of technological uh, measures uh has led to young adults becoming uh, addicted to social media that is you saying it as if it's your own words okay thank you okay, okay sir um, yes, there's another hand. I'm sorry, I can't see who is raising Brazil. Uh, is it Mr. or Ms. Adewale, please? Adewale, please. Are you still here? Mr. Adewale, about you, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other person with any question? Somebody that is living is raising hand i don't know um okay so if we understand that um i'll just go on and uh, quickly wrap up and we can take other questions and when mr dewale comes in he can ask his question uh Agashi, please just let me know hello oh, oh hello sir hello this is mr dewale sir yes sir yes sir go on sir uh, like, like I said, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think uh, I got you right to a uh, next thing. But what I want to ask now, having um, having pick point some authors, you know, in the topics like the citation you made mention. Yes, sir. Is, is, it, is it now compulsory or mandatory for me to now go with one or go with the two of them, or I should just stand aloof? I haven't cited them. I should still write on my own without even probably maybe I feel okay. What one has said, like Mr. Shewa has said, is is in line with my thoughts. Can I still write along that side? I haven't compared the two authors. Yes. So really, what is happening is that you are not just doing comparison. When you do a critical analysis, it's not critical comparison. Okay. But what you are doing, like uh, like the slide, the point I mentioned is, you are bringing out two opinions, yeah. what A have said, what B have said. In some cases, some that support. So you might have a topic on like uh, young adult social media addiction. You have Shenwu going contrary to what I have said. But you have another author who is supporting what I have said. Okay. So all you need to do is you need to bring these authors together, as in you need to write about them and say uh, it's just about using these conjunctive uh, words or conjunction in, in English, you know. Meanwhile, however, uh, conversely, uh, you understand, uh, in addition, so all these kind of uh, conjunction are all you need to join those arguments and discussions along. You need to put your voice, whether it is in agreement or in disagreement, because that is where you are establishing your own expertise. Do you understand, sir? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. But now when I say put your voice, I don't mean write a paragraph. Do you understand? It's okay. just that you can just say, for example, um, although Shemu or uh, TKZ 2023 or Shemu 2020 has um, suggested that this, this, this is not, um, you know, uh, influencing the addiction, uh, the young youth's addiction to social media, um, it is clear 
you understand that um, the increase in social media addiction will have a repercussion on a young adult mental health. That is your own voice. You don't need a, a whole paragraph. Okay. But it's just that you have to, you have to let us know what you are saying or think about that topic in view. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. I have um, somebody else again. Uh, I got uh, Cosmos, yeah. yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, bro, yeah. Cosmos, hold on. Uh, sir, okay. we set this thing to only one hour on Teams. I don't think okay. we can finish one hour. So how do we extend it now? I don't know. It will be that um, if your team is, uh, it, will just, it will just flash five minutes towards the end. But it will not cut you off. It's Zoom that will cut you off. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay, sir. Cosmos. Uh, Cosmos. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Um, in a in a scenario where you have, you have just been asked to. There are two different theories, and you have okay. just been asked to explain the differences. Okay. And then you are you are writing in this. You know, explaining these differences using references. Yeah. Do you have to now factor in your opinion? Because um, maybe you really don't, maybe there's no consensus among scholars on these both theories. So are that you supposed be, to now that take would sides? Be opinion. Okay. That yes. would be your own contribution. Okay. So for example, if you are being asked to write about two theories, maybe um, the uh, planned behavior theory and the uh, uh, mass talk uh, uh, theory of uh, what is it called? Now? Needs, hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Now, what you do is that you have to, in, in, in such a case, you need to talk about those that have used the theory and what they say about the theory. Some of them might have used that theory and said that this theory is more relevant within the social sciences. The other might say this theory was developed or uh, uh, attuned towards um, psychology. Some might have a different all manners of you know, discussion or opinion about it. And then you will bring those that also contradict the theory or uh, the other theory. But at the end of it, you now, what will be your voice? You, that's where you cannot come and say, um, it is clear that there, there is no agreed, you know, or there's no consensus around this theory. However, so, 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 I believe that this theory is more suitable or prominent in this area. Meanwhile, this other author believes that this theory is more suitable in that area. Further studies have been conducted which used both theories to achieve a given this uh, insight or blah, blah, blah. So it could be that using one of these theories will not be enough or sufficient in achieving any theoretical uh, framework on concept. Therefore, it will be more you know, useful to adopt both theories when making certain blah 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 so that is your own view now you see you are not tilting towards those that accept you are not tilting towards those that do not accept but you are saying let a and b not fight they are brothers so let's bring two of them whenever we want to make a certain um theoretical uh, finding or conclusion okay sir I don't know. Does that help? With yes, it does. It does. I I I understand it. Okay, sir. Yes. Please, if you have asked your question, kindly click on the raising hand again so that it will take the hands down, and then so that just for us to know um, who still have a question um, to ask. All you just need to do is click the same place again where you raise hand. Once you click it again, it will lower your hands. Okay, so I was just going to uh, finish up my slides so that 
we can take more questions as the case may be. So I just uh, mentioned here that criticality allows us to demonstrate our critical thinking skills and your ability to synthesize information. Now, this is where the work of literature review is. Ability to synthesize information. What do we mean by synthesize information? It just means to merge, to bring together in a logical way information from different sources. Just like I was saying, this person said A, and in that course of writing, okay, I could say, for example, that the reasons for this is lack of technological features. So you could just start by saying, without um, adequate technological features, there are consequences that could, uh, there are consequences such as uh, social media addiction, um, uh, uh, cyber attack, blah, blah, blah. And then you just say all this. You know, say this, however, is not a, a primary function of this or that, but B or C. Now, this idea I'm just shared now, I was trying to put my own information from my study and Shemu's own information from his study into a paragraph. Instead of just saying, Chikeze 2022 said that. Shemu 20, meanwhile, Shemu 2023 said that. Now, when I'm able to mix this information in a logical manner to support or to critique an idea, um, that is all we actually say about synthesis. So you 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 bring different ideas, different points together in a logical and coherent manner to um, support or to clearly state an idea. That is what criticality helps you to achieve whenever you are writing. And as you say, it says that it helps you to develop your own unique perspective on the topic you are writing about. So once you understand my own, Shewu's own, then you can now know where to come in and air your own view. And if you read any literature, you see that that is actually what is going on. It's just somebody come and report what this person have said, critique it, and then air their own view. And that is their own journal article published. So, as you were already asking accurately, I said, remember to follow the recommended citation or referencing in your university. I know Aruji, for example, Aruji has her own Harvard style which is called RGU Harvard Referencing. <laughs> they have their own style. In fact, in my, in my university, we have our own, which is called Cite It Right. That is what my university is using. It's different from what my previous university, Winchester, was using. Winchester was using the normal Harvard Referencing style. But here, where I am at East London, they use Cite It Right. RGU you use Aruji you have had referencing, which is different from what Aberdeen Uni uses. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the referencing style your university uses. You don't know how to use it. That is the job of the librarians. In Aruji you, in Aberdeen Uni, apart from Nigeria, sorry to say, <laughs> but everywhere in the world, that is actually the work of the librarians. So email library people or librarians and just ask them that you will need one-to-one -one support on citation and referencing. They have already done it so well for you that they will produce that as an online document. 
So you see, um, for online document, you see uh, referencing RGU uh, citation. So if you look at that, you see RGU Harvard referencing. So this gives you clearly what you should do. And in text, so your major concern will be the in text citation. In text citations. And what that simply means is that you need to check, for example, when to use brackets, authors, editors, surname, year of publication. So this is what you should familiarize yourself with as far as RGU is concerned. Now, when you paraphrase, do you see, when you paraphrase, that means paraphrasing is allowed. But when you do that, it says the full citation appears in brackets. If it is at the end of a sentence, it will always appear before the full stop. This is what we expect you to do. So you must be familiar with this. You can see I was able to assess this even though I'm not in RGU um, intranet. So it's publicly available. So he said there is a tendency to that, 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 and then you put whoever said that. Now, when you paraphrase and you want to use the author's name in the sentence, he said only the year of publication will appear in brackets. So like when I said, according to Shehu, you put in bracket 2022, comma, there is a tendency to, you see, it's still the same text, but done differently. So when you want to use the author's name in your writing, then you just say as it is given, according to this person, you put the year in bracket. Even if it's at all, it will be Smith, the ET space AL dot uh, full stop comma will be outside and the year will be. So go through when you are citing a book, this is how you go. It. When you are citing a journal article, this is how you do it. So there are, it's all given for you, which is what I'm saying is really our major problem is time. The problem with us is time. So if you can take out time to really go through this, you will see how it is done. Now they have given you with the RG1 an example of how to do it. In addition to professional journals, the academic writing research has also examined these are expected to perform now, you see, because the, the, this very statement is coming from this guy. This from here to here is coming from this guy. But it has been paraphrased. They now said in one of the first studies on student writing task, this person, you see, analyzed 54, this, this, this from one graduate and this, this, this and that, that. And then you see, after he has done this, he went over to mention that name without putting the year. After he had called it here, immediately, the next line was that identified seven categories of writing tasks expected of students. Do you understand? So they have given you an example. This is where it's a talk. Now, one key thing you need to know about it all is that we don't use it all except the author is between four and more. So when it is one, two, three persons that wrote the book, it is not it all. You list the three names. You only use it all when it is four and above. Do we understand? So remember, and like I said, if you don't know how to or how to assess your required style, ask your module leader or supervisor for what is accepted and follow it. Take note of every article or journal you read and quote in your writing. Many a times, 
we read articles, but we don't even remember which article we read. So one thing you need to know is that any article you have read and you use, make a note of it. So I'll give you my own uh, practice. One of the ways I was doing that was that on my desktop, um, let me see if I can share again. On my desktop, I had two um, folders. So one would be, one would be used article, used article and then the other one will just be you know either uh, not used so when i open any article as i'm reading and i i see something in that article that i like or you know something i want to cite i will copy that out before the invention of uh, bad and uh, chat gpt I'll copy it out and put it on a notepad like this. That point that I want to use in my writing. I'll copy it out and put it on a notepad. Immediately I copy it out and put it on a notepad, I'll put the author. So let me just go with the Smith. So I'll put, let's say Smith 2015 argued that whatever I have copied that makes sense to me, I'll paraphrase it and put it there. Immediately I have this, I will download that article and put it under the used folder i'll put my article under the used folder now by the time i finish all my writing i can now come back to each of these articles and start to use them in my references you know my list of references so that way i will not miss any article that i have used but not cited now when i started my masters and i realized that rgo has something that is called ref work i don't know whether they still use it now ref work is an online database that you can also create and then when you read an article if you go to google scholar for example so if we go to Google Scholar, so if we go to Google Scholar like this, you realize that under Google Scholar, you can make changes to this, go to advanced search, sorry, settings. Under your setting, you can choose show links that will enable you to import ref work. So you, I'll just say show links to import citation into ref work. So I'll click on this, and then I can increase the number of search that will appear. So to so like say 20. And um, when I click on any of the results, it should open a new browser so that I will not lose the way I'm coming from. So once I make these changes under my setting, I click save. Now let's look at AI and consumer behavior as an example. Now, once I have searched for this, you know you have the ability to customize your search to a given year. One thing you should know with academic writing is that your, your citation should not be more than five years old. Your citations must not be more than five years old, except wherein there are models, theories, frameworks that, you know, um, uh, let's say, uh, have outlived their criticism. So they have been so tested that they are still relevant up to now, like this, the theory of planned behavior the theory of uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, all these theories, they are still valid even as of today. And they are not five years old. They are more than five years old. Such theories, you can still use them. 
But on a normal article, article journal publication, it shouldn't be more than five years old that you'll be citing. So for that reason, we are in 2021, uh, 23, and then what you need to do is to make sure that you can now come over here and set your year. You understand? So you can just put here and say 20 from 2018 to now, and then you'll cite. So with this, it's only going to give you articles that have been published between 2018 to 2023. You will not get anyone outside of that um, with this uh, filter. And then you can see that here, I have import to ref work, the same on each of that import to ref work, import to ref work. All I just do is I can just click on it like this, and then it will automatically open the new ref work. I can sign in using my university. For those of you in Robert Gordon University, are they still using it? It seems they are no more using it. So um, you look for your university. Um, you can ask them which one they are using now. Um, and then you will be able to do the same. And once you register, let me see the robot. Oh, OK, they are not they are not using it again. But when I did my PhD there, they were that is what I use. So with that, you sign in and then this very citation will automatically be imported into your ref work. And all you need to do will now be to just go to refer and generate your um, reference list. So you don't need to even type or do anything. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing you can do is if you look at this place, you can see it has site. So this site is what gives you the same way it will appear. You understand? So if you're using Harvard referencing, that means this is how this work should be cited. So you can actually just copy it and go to where you want to paste it and paste it. And that is that for you. And that is Harvard referencing. If you are using Vancouver, that is that. If you are using APA, that is that. So whatever one that you are using, that way it works for you. So that is that for referencing and what you can do to ensure that you remain valid on referencing. Because it becomes plagiarism when you have said something and you did not give credit to whom it belongs. And that is why I'm encouraging you to please don't copy anything verbatim or even quote them verbatim. I've seen some students, they will come and say, but sir, um, this, this work, I have cited the person. I can just put quotation mark and let me just type and put beginner. Yes, you can use quotation mark to show what the author have said, but please don't make it verbatim. Don't just go there and copy the exact word of the author and paste it and just use quotation mark so that he will say, but I cited it. No. We are not looking for you to come and regurgitate what the author have said. What we want to hear, like I said, is your own view. Engage with the article, engage with the topic, and come up with your own view. Let us know that you understand the area that you are you know, talking about. That is what is important to us, and not just a copy and paste from the author. Yeah? Do we understand? Do you need any 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 more question? For example, I need more example question. Just to make sure we are in the same page. We are on the same page of this uh, presentation. OK, um, just moving forward as I go to the very last part of this. Presentation. 
Now you have gathered your sources, you have written out all your points, and you know what you want to write. How do you present it? How do you finally put them all together? You can take this approach of analytical um, approach when doing this. Now, when you are presenting your ideas, it's just like when you go for interview, they will ask you to use the STAR method to answer your questions the same way. So when you want to answer any question in an interview, that might just be something that someone needs from here. Always use the STAR method. That is what gets you, you know, demonstrating experience and you know it. They'll say start from the situation um, and then you talk about your action, what you did, and then you talk about the the relevance, how, you know, the what you did, how did it bring about the solution and all that you needed to do. So the situation, what was the task that was required to be done? And then what are your own action, which is the A, and then what is the reward or what is the outcome of what you did? How did that now bring any change? The same way when you are presenting your academic writing, you can follow the analytical approach. Now, when you want to follow the analytical approach, one of the key things you should know is who are the key actors in a sequence of events? Who? Who started and who said what? For example, it would be very ironical for you to cite somebody that did the work in 2023 and you'll be saying that that person was the one that started it, and then somebody in 2022 counteracted it. It doesn't make sense because 2023 will actually be the one that will be counteracting what has been done in 2022. So you need to know the sequence and the flow of all this as well. What are the necessary events that you need to consider in that particular topic that you're writing? And then what explanations support that particular idea or disagrees with it. Is there any pattern that you have identified? So I summarize all this using this model called the SPSER model. When you are writing up your academic work, make sure you present it this way. What is the situation? What is the problem? As I said, situation is just described, give a context, a brief history of what you are talking about. Now, what is the problem? Describe or define the problem. And then go into talking about the solution or what needs to be done. Go into the evaluation bit and what are your recommendations. So if you follow this SPSER model, it will also make your argument to be logical and it will follow each other. And that, as you can tell, brings me to the very end of this presentation. And uh, once again, I apologize for not making it in person, whereby I would have given you some article, ask you to read it and summarize it and also discuss on this topic. That was what I intended to do. Come with five journal articles and give you a topic and ask you read these three or uh, five articles and then write just a paragraph on this topic based on what you have gathered from these five articles. And then we can critically look at it and see how you are able to um, do a good job in that. But pardon me for time and the weather not making it. Um, I'm happy to look at anything that you probably have written. And please let me put a warning, Brazil, you remember. Please don't send me your work when it is due the next day. Or when it is due in, let's say today is Monday and that work is due on Friday. That same week because I'm busy. So you will not expect me to actually uh, like the case that happened. Somebody sent me a whole dissertation and expected me to read it in one day. I'm sorry. I mean, I have other things that I have my own student that I'm legally bound to attend to. So if you have anything you want to share with me that you want me to you know, take a look at, 
give you some ideas whether it's okay or not and all of that. That's my um, email address, which is outside of any of these universities. So you can reach out to me on cdfavor at gmail.com and share your work uh, for me to proofread. So I'm not doing the work for you. I just I don't know whether this is being recorded or not. So for me to proofread for you, I am happy to proofread and guide you on some of the points that you have made and how you could go about them, uh, making them more critical in in the way it should be. So if any question exists, I'm happy to take them. If none, thank you very much for your time. And I appreciate you being here for this one hour, 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you so, 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 so much. It's actually an elaborate uh, uh, session. So we'll give room for questions. Please ask your questions. Please ask questions before we end the meeting. Uh, uh, the question I want to ask is that, eh? Yes, sir. I have not I have not written a report before. Uh, this is my first year and the first semester. Yes, sir. So, so once when, when you are told to write a report. Yes, sir. So like what's the point? What's the things that you're supposed to know? Like when you are told to write a report on a topic. So it would have been, which is what I'm saying that I am so sorry that I'm not in person. This kind of question, the way I answer it is that you have to come with that assessment brief. Then we look at it together. I'll tell you what they are looking for. Yeah, okay, like, a, like, like, like a, this thing, like in a situation, they say they write a report. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Uh -huh, write a report. Can you send me, send me that assessment brief on that uh, CD favor Gmail? I will read it and then I'll answer you what they are asking you for just now. Okay, thank example. you. Okay.